your telephone would ring in the next 10 seconds? Or have you ever walked down a strange street and had the feeling that you knew what lay beyond the unturned corner? Yes? Then you've had a brief encounter with the world of the unknown. You are ready for the actual human experience that follows. This is not merely a story of arson. They will put this fire out in time. No one will be hurt. But she who started the fire, what about her? You saw her face. She is not merely an arsonist. Look at her again. Eleven o'clock, exactly the same time as before, but many miles away. Bill, I'm gonna be perfectly frank with you. I don't know what causes these fevers. They seem to be malaria, the way they come and go, but they're not quite like it. She'll be fine in the morning. That's the way it's been. In the morning. She's already past the crisis. When did the fever come on? Around 10. Inside of 15 minutes, it shot up to 103. It's the fourth time this year. I just don't know. Oh, dear. Another fire. At Leeburg this time. Fortunately, all the kids got out. The building was pretty well destroyed, though. Why, that's the fourth one this year, and they all seem to happen in the same sort of place. The last one was at a girls' school, do you remember? I'd be willing to bet the same firebugs responsible for all of them. Well, now, how could that be? The girls' school, well, it was just on the border of Canada, and Lieberg is, well, it's only two hours from New York City. All down the Yeah, hide it someplace. It always upsets her to read about these fires. Good morning, Good morning. Mrs. Farley. Good morning, darling. Good morning. You know, I don't know why it took me so long to get dressed. Well, such long faces for such a lovely morning. Well, you you look so well. I I declare I don't see how you can. Now, now, Mrs. Harry, I do not want to hear another word about last night. Bill. Esther. Look, I... What's the matter? Well, you were awfully sick last night and... Please. Please, don't let's talk about it today. Please. All right. I love you. paper it didn't come this morning it always comes 
What's the matter? What happened? Was there a fire last night? Now, don't upset yourself, please. What did you do with it if you burned it? No, all right. Don't you tell him I told you. And please don't let it bother you. It's no concern of yours. Hello, Chief Wilson. It's, uh, it's very good of you to be so prompt. Well, you said you had to see me. Yes. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Everybody's out, so we won't be disturbed. Won't you sit down? Thank you very much. What was it you wanted to tell me, Mrs. Quentin? It's about those fires. I should have come to you some time ago, but I just couldn't bring myself to. But now, I'm afraid that children might be burned to death. Oh, you mean those orphanage fires? Yes, they, they are terrible, but thank God they're nowhere around here. But they will be. Because she will be here. Who? My sister, Emily. Oh, Mrs. Quinton. I know that she is the one that's responsible for setting all of those fires. How do you know that? I know... because I... I can feel her mind working. What do you mean, you can feel her mind? I always knew what she was thinking. You see? We're identical twins. I haven't seen her since we were ten. But I know what she's thinking. I see. Uh, well, what about your sister? Does she know what you're thinking? No. No. And she never knew that I could read her mind. She had such terrible, horrible thoughts. Mrs. Quinton, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Everybody thought that she was kind and, and good and wonderful. That's what she wanted them to think. But I knew what she really was. And when those hideous fires started to break out, I kept hoping that somebody would catch her and, 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 and put her away. Mrs. Quinton, have you talked this over with your husband? No. No, you see, my husband doesn't know I have a twin sister. Why not? Well, when I was 17, I left my hometown and I came to New York. That's where I met my husband. And, well, it didn't seem to be any reason for me to tell him about the past. But now, I'm afraid. Well, it's all right. I'll, I'll take care of it once. And just don't you worry about a thing, Mrs. Quentin. Oh, do you, do you have to involve my husband? I mean, you know, I, you can imagine how ashamed I am if there were any scandal in oh, his family. No, 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 I'll, I'll keep it very quiet. Just don't you worry, Mrs. Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Esther. Esther, please. I, I, I knew he'd go straight to you. I should have known he'd do it. But I, I can't help it if he doesn't believe me. Bill, Bill, you've got to do something. You've got to do something to stop her. You must, before it's too late, you must do something. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I should have told you a long time ago. I know it. I am sorry. But Esther, we don't... We don't even know where you're where Emily is. But she was in Lieberg last night. That's where the fire was, wasn't it? Mrs. Quentin, please, listen for a moment. If it's true that you know what your sister is thinking... If it is true, I swear to you that 
it is true. And working on the theory that you have a sister named Emily. You don't... You don't believe that? Well, it's... It's hard to believe. You've never mentioned her before. Would you... Would you believe me if Emily called me on the phone tonight? I can will her to call me. What? I can will her to call me. I can. If you can do that, then will her to stop setting fires. Oh, but I can't do that, Dr. Parks. Don't you think I have tried? Don't you think I've really tried? Bill. Bill, you don't believe a word I've said, do you? Well, I... darling, first you say that you can will her to do one thing, and then you say that you can't will her to do something else? But don't you see? I can't... I can't change what she really is. Emily is evil, Bill. She is evil. Oh. You think... You think that I'm all imagining this, don't you? Don't no, you think that? No, no. You're worn out from the fevers. Sometimes people get strange fancies when they're ill, isn't it? I am not! Bill, don't you understand? I'm not insane. Oh, no, I am not ill. I'm not, not saying insane. Esther. We're not saying it. Emily will call here at 10 o'clock tonight. And when she does, I want you to answer the phone, Bill. And I want you to be here, Dr. Parks and Chief Wilson. And then, and then perhaps you'll believe me. I hope it won't be too late. Well, if it's all right, I'll be going along then. Oh, certainly, Chief. Uh, again, my apologies for wasting your time this way. Hello. Hello. Ga Ga what? Gainstown, New York calling. What? Yes, this is the Quentin residence. Hello. Hello. Th this is William Quentin. Esther's upstairs. Uh, who's calling, please? Emily Harkness. Can you wait a second, please? I I'll get Esther. Hello. Central. Central, we were cut off. Oh, thank you. She hung up. What did Emily say? She said, this is Emily Harkness. Is, is Esther there? When I asked her to wait, she... She laughed in a strange way and... and hung up. Bill! Stop her. She started. Listen, she started another fire Esther, again. Esther, darling, we just spoke to her on no, the phone. No, it's It's a convent school this time. It's in the back. It's spreading all through the building. We, we just Stop talked. Stop her. Well, listen to me. We just... Stop. Leave her again, Bill. Take her upstairs. Laverne, stop her. Bernie, stop. Stop her. Central, Chief Wilson. I can make a long distance call. Gainstown, New York. The police station, please hurry. Hello. Hello? This is Chief Wilson, calling from Cedar Falls. Do you have a convent or parochial school in Gainstown? St. Anne's? 
Thank you for your information. I'll explain later. Hello, Central. Please connect me with St. Anne's School, Gainstown, New York. Hello, St. Anne's School? Yes. This is Sister Agatha speaking. Cedar Falls? Police Chief? No, no, I wasn't asleep. What can I do for you, sir? Have you had a fire there this evening? A fire? Certainly not. Wait just a minute. I can't talk now. What happened? There is a fire. I, I, I heard the people yelling. I heard the bells. I'm going to get action on this right now. There's no sense bothering with Gainstown. She moves too fast for that. She must live somewhere. Your wife said she hadn't heard or seen her for some time, but other people have. Where did Mrs. Quentin used to live? Waterville. She was raised in the orphanage there. I'm off there right now. Bill, please tell me the truth. Did anything happen last night that was bad? I mean, I'm not talking about the phone call from Emily. Everything's all right. Try to eat something, dear. I'll try. Mr. Quentin, Chief Wilson. Oh, yes. Esther. What happened? Tell me. Did you find her? Did you? Did you find her? Oh, darling, this is a business matter. Let no. me know. Mrs. Quentin should hear this, too. I just got back from Waterville. I had a long talk with the superintendent of the orphanage there. Go on. Mrs. Quentin did have a twin sister, Emily, all right. They shared a room together when they were kids. When they were 10 years old, there was a fire in that room. Emily died in that fire. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't. I tell you, she didn't. She didn't die. She didn't. I tell you that she didn't. No, she didn't. She didn't. No, no. Bill. Bill, listen. Now, you, you talked with Emily on the phone. And, and Dr. Parks, you, you heard him. And, and so did Chief Wilson. Now, you, you can't deny that, either of you. Can, can you? You can't! You just can't deny that! You heard them! And, and wouldn't I have known if my very own sister were burned to death in a fire? Esther, darling, for heaven's sake. I... I remember that fire. The curtains. The curtains, they were, they were ablaze. And they, they caught fire to a dress. And she was burned, but she didn't die, I tell you that. She didn't die. Mrs. I Quentin, tell you, you she didn't die. Herself. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. She's, she's getting stronger. She's getting stronger. Please, you've got to stop her. Stop her, please, Bill. And will I, to come here? Bill. Oh, Bill, do you believe me? Yes, darling, yes. You do. You believe Will her to come here. Yes. 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 Bill, what are you doing? You're losing your mind? She did call, Doctor. Somebody called. Somebody called at 10 o'clock, just as Esther said. And that somebody said she was Emily Harkness. Will her to come here. Train tonight. Emily, the train. Uh, 
I'm sorry I kept you waiting. How's Mrs. Quinn? She'll be all right. Once we find Emily and put her away. But I told you that I don't Emily... care what you told me. Emily Harkness did call here last night, and there was a fire in Gainstown. The superintendent in Waterville must have made a mistake in the records. It wasn't a matter of just checking the records. The man was there at the time. He remembers the girls well. He remembers what happened. So does my wife. She said that her sister did not die in the fire, and I believe her. I didn't just check with the superintendent. I checked with three other people who were there at the time. They said that Emily was a sweet, lovable girl, and that her sister, your wife, was insanely jealous of her. They didn't say that Mrs. Quentin started the fire. It may have been an accident. May have been an accident? What are you trying to say? All I'm trying to say is, after it happened, Esther went into a high fever. She was out of her head for quite some time. After she got over it, she never mentioned her sister again. The folks at the orphanage thought it was better that way. I prefer to believe what I heard last night with my own ears. Good night, Chief. I wish we hadn't left Esther alone. She's not alone. Mrs. Harney's with her. It's warm in here. There it is. phenomenon of bilocation, the power which enables a person to be in two places at once, has been reported many times. In a sense, the one entity becomes two. The second is sometimes called the etheric double. In this instance, Esther Quentin may have been subconsciously aware of the truth, that the evil Emily was actually her other self and so deliberately consigned both entities to the flames. You're about to see an incredible human document. 
an encounter with forces that no one on this earth really understands. You may find it shocking, impossible, but it is nevertheless evidence of a universe beyond the power of our five senses. Great pleasure to have you with us, Senora. Senor? Thank you. Parkin, give me a lift. Let me off at seven. Running us ragged, huh? Oh, boy. Never seen the likes. Registering in droves. I guess it's Caruso, all right. You shouldn't do that. Why not? It isn't right, that's all. So it's not right. Here, come on. Have one on Sandow, the world's strongest man. No, thanks, I, I don't drink. You mean not anymore? All right, not anymore. You mean not when somebody's looking, huh? World's strongest man. Did you see him fight that lion out at the park Sunday? No. A dollar a ticket. For what? You got better teeth than that lion. Uh, just a minute. Hmm. That's I call mellow. They catch you with your job. You ought to know. Anyway, who's going to catch me? <laughs> dollar a ticket. piece of that ice, it's so hot I could pass out. Sure, help yourself. April 17th, 1906, San Francisco. Every hotel lobby in town is filled. Filled with people all hoping to catch a glimpse of the visiting celebrities. Mrs. Patrick Campbell, the great star of the theater. Sandow, the world's strongest man. Enrico Caruso, who tonight will sing Carmen at the Opera House. However, no one is paying the slightest attention to this man, to this bellboy. No attention whatsoever, and that's unfortunate. Because on this day, this man is far and away the most important human being in San Francisco. Up. He'll be all right. Thank you. I call the hotel doctor. I'm terribly sorry about all this inconvenience. Oh, inconvenience. You should be sorry for him. Look how pale it is. I, I guess I fainted, Mr. Adams. If you were feeling ill, Perkins, you should have reported to the bell captain. Better take him on bed. 
Be careful for your back, Papa. No, I'm, I'm all right now. If you get up so quick, you're going to faint again. You really shouldn't trouble yourselves. The doctor will be here at any moment. Couldn't you make it to your own room, Perkins? Uh, sir, I'm perfectly all right. Really, I am. I, I don't need a doctor. Look how blue his lips are. Sit down for a moment. Uh, I, I don't have to. I'm, I'm all right now. Good. Then attend to Signor Bandetti's luggage at once. Yes, sir. Oh. And uh, bring a vase for their flowers. Yes, sir. He's quite all right, madame. How do you know? I trust your stay with us will be quite comfortable, madame. Good day. Good day, sir. I trust you'll be quite comfortable with us. We're gonna try. <laughs> this one room is bigger than our whole village back in Sicily. Mm -hmm. Eh, Rosa? Mm -hmm. Your uncle who said I was no good. Ma, what did he say now? Wait that you get the bill, Mr. Smartman. <laughs> hey, are you still blue? I'm, uh, I'm all right now, really. Uh, good. We want our kids in Salinas to know we got here all right. Yes. How we do? Well, the best way is to send a telegram. There's an office downstairs. With us, the English is not so hundred percent. You help us with the words? Sure, I'll, I'll bring up a blank as soon as I get the vase. You know, Mr. Banditti and me, we were married 40 years ago today. Uh, congratulations. And the uh, children, and the grandchildren, and the bambini, and the family, they want to give us a big party. We snuck off. <laughs> We're going to be by ourselves in a fancy hotel. Me and this pretty signorina. Oh, signorina. What that man going to think about me? I'm really his wife, you know. <laughs> oh, you get him crazier every year. Uh, this for you, five dollars. Thank you. Use some of that money to buy some herbs. When you come back, I'll tell you the name. They're going to make you feel better. Yes, ma'am. I, I hope you both have many more years of happiness together. Uh, grazie. We hope so, too. Eugenio, he's a nice man, but five dollars. So, I'm sport. Tonight, Caruso. And then, I take you dancing. And after, drinking wine until, uh, who knows, uh, three, four o'clock in morning. And tomorrow I call for the kids. Come for Papa's funeral. Earthquake! Earthquake! What does he mean? <laughs> Poor man. 
But you should be happy, not like this. I'm sorry. But that poor man, he upset me. I told you he's sick. Yes, you told me. Why'd you lock me up like that? It must be almost five o'clock. If it wouldn't embarrass the hotel, I should press charges against you, Perkins, and send you to jail. Now pack your things and get out. Get out? Get out. Oh, look, Mr. Adams, I've, I, I've been sitting here thinking about it At calmly. first, I was gullible enough to believe you were ill. What are you talking about? Spreading panic all over the hotel. But I, I saw an earthquake. Now let's stop these little games. Harris, come in here. Now then, Harris has told me all about it. I sure hated to, Gerald, but what could I do? I warned you. Warned? If you ever so much as ever try to get another job in this town. Warned about what? Mr. Sandow complained. What could I do? Stealing whiskey. Stealing? Getting drunk, terrifying the guests. I, I didn't steal any whiskey. Oh, come on, Gerald. Look, he's saying that to save his own neck. Mr. Adams, I got an awful lot of orders. Very well. Get back to work. You be out of here in five minutes. I tell you, it was Harris. I find nothing in Harris's records about being in hospitals because of alcohol. That was years ago. Please, Mr. Adams, listen to me. All right, fire me. I don't care, but, but listen to me. I've been sitting down here trying to figure out what happened. I know what happened. No, 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 please, listen to me. This, this may sound absolutely ridiculous, but maybe, maybe I was given a power to, uh, to sort of look ahead so that I could warn the people and save them from dying. I tell you, I saw an earthquake. Perkins, have you lost your mind? Out there. I, I saw those walls crumbling, and upstairs in the pantry, the shelves. And then there was that noise, and there was a clock, and the clock said 5.13. And that is when it's supposed to happen. Please take me seriously, even if it is one chance in a million. It's almost 5.13. Indeed it is. Well, then do something. Such as? Warn the people. Even if it is a false alarm. 5.13, you said? Yes. It is now exactly 5.22. Let us hope that all our earthquakes prove so mild. You be out of here in five minutes. not to be surprised when he gets the bill. For a zucchini like that, he's got to pay, especially when he takes me away from my afternoon nap.
What's the matter with you? Did the horse hurt you? Are you all right, mister? Are you all right? Yeah. Then why did you scream like that? Uh, come on, we got to finish unloading. I have to be back here tomorrow bright and early. I hope the dinner party is a big success and that Caruso's singing is as good as my zucchini. Say, say, wait. Yeah? What you said about tomorrow bright and early. Yeah? What time do you get here tomorrow? Same as always, why? What time? What time? What's it to you? About five. Well, if you already know, then why ask? Look, don't come back here tomorrow. Why? Because if you do, you'll be killed. <laughs> no, I know. Listen, it isn't 5.13 tonight, it's 5.13 tomorrow morning. I know, believe me, I know, I know. Get away from no, me. No, I know, come don't on, go. Get her. Please, come wait, on, wait, on. I know. Don't, stay there. Don't come back here. Anything happened to Mrs. Parks down the street. Just a beautiful little bulldog the apple of her eyes. Well, it's gone too. Just disappeared. Let's look at the poor old lady's heart. She keeps going around calling, Dear Homer, dear Homer. Such a beautiful voice. The cat. There's not an alley cat left in the whole neighborhood. You know those fancy people, the Lesters? Had three angoras. All gone. Now, why would all the animals disappear like that? You know, even the birds have gone. There's a fellow that does handiwork around our house. He keeps pigeons, homing pigeons. All gone. Every last one of them. Just poof, gone. Makes a person wonder. It's spooky, that's what it is. Because the animals know. That's why they ran. Somebody must believe me or you'll all be killed. What? I, I saw it. The walls came crashing down and then there was that noise and, and, and the people crushed by the rocks. Please, please, you must believe me. I'm, I, I'm telling the truth. I, I'm telling the truth. Somebody, somebody must believe me. Crusoe was more pleasing to the ear than to the eye. It must be noted that his Don Jose had too many chins. Come too much faster. Excuse me. Yes? I've been to all the other papers, but they won't believe me. About what? I saw it. Please, you must listen to me. It should be put into the headlines. I'm just the drama critic. The news office will open at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, 8 o'clock's too late. Could you wait till I finish this review? The printer will be in to pick it up any minute. No, I, I can't wait, don't you understand? I, if I'm wrong, let them laugh at me, I don't care, but if I'm right, then the people will be warned and lives will be saved. When's the world gonna end this time? Oh, I'm sorry. No disrespect meant, but frankly, there have been so many of you fellows around the last couple of years that, well, I suppose one gets jaded. It's not the world that's going to end. It's San Francisco. I couldn't have been dreaming. I was awake each time. I saw it as, as clearly as anything I've seen in all my life. You saw what? The earthquake. Call him ready yet, Mr. Stevens? Yes, Harry. This gentleman's been telling me something quite extraordinary. My first inclination was to have him thrown out of here, but I can't explain it. I have the strangest impulse to... 
But, sir, you tell him about the, the hallucination or whatever you call it. And if he doesn't laugh out loud, I just might make a jackass of myself and wake up the editor. Don't wake up the editor, Mr. Stevens. I've heard all his hallucinations. Ask him about the one he had the night my mother died. Harry. Harry. What is it? Harry, please. He'd been dead drunk for a week. He came staggering home a couple of hours after she was dead. Harry, I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk Ask now. him about that hallucination. Harry! He's my father, but I wouldn't admit it. I just don't want you to get in any trouble. Harry. Harry, look at me. I'm not drunk. Look at me. I'm not drunk. He doesn't look drunk now. He hasn't been sober in 40 years. Harry! I didn't want to come. But it was the last place. I saw the earthquake. I saw the people being killed. You still don't think he isn't drunk? Harry! Oh, I've seen him this way a thousand times. If you wanted to call the editor, well, let me make a call for you. Central, give me the police. No. Hello. I want a police wagon. No, no Harry, one. please, no! No, no Harry! No! 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 You finally got him quiet, huh? Yeah, but what a night. Oh, sure. It's almost a quarter after five. In 45 minutes, we can go home. cannot talk me into living, we would be down there. It was not me, Papa. It was him, that man. He was not sick. He knew. How? This fire will burn for another 20 hours and will leave San Francisco in ashes. As in many other disasters, there will emerge legends of psychic phenomena which no one can prove or disprove. The hallucination of Gerald Perkins is only one example. Another, well, legend, if you will, is the unexplainable message received by a railroad telegrapher in Ogden, Utah, telling of the earthquake and urging that medical and food supplies be sent to the stricken area at once. Now, thousands of such messages were sent out after the earthquake. But this one was received four hours before. One more thing. The law requires that all such communications list the place of origin. This message had no such listing. No one ever knew where it came from. A message from where? About an event that had not yet taken place. What you're about to see is a matter of human record. Explain it, we cannot. Disprove it, we cannot. We simply invite you to explore with us the amazing world of the unknown, to take that one step beyond.
This is the scene of the crime. In this house, somewhere in France, a perfectly normal, attractive American girl lived a lifetime in 48 hours. If old houses could only talk, what stories they could tell. Well, this ancient dwelling has a voice, a voice that Rita Wallace will soon hear quite distinctly. This is not very modern. It's quite old, but very comfortable. And that, mademoiselle, is the dining room. The living room, the library, anything that you want. <laughs> What's this? Oh, that's a storeroom now. Many years ago, that used to be the cool room. We used to keep the butter, eggs, milk, all sorts of things like that in there. I could use it for a dark room. It's right near the sink. <laughs> the plumbing is quite old. It still goes. <laughs> and that is Madame Rocamier. Hmm. Lovely. Oh. Oh, mademoiselle. Oh. Uh, I must have caught her. Flu bug or something. I'm uh, awfully sorry to say, but uh, I think you have fever. I'll be all right. I've got a very good physician. I better call him for you. Oh, I'll be fine. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Ah. This is not very impressive. But it's the only house that I have. Oh, oh of fine. course, I've got a chateau. It's quite grand, but expensive. No, this is fine. I'll take it. Oh. Oh. You'll do rotten to look any farther anyhow. Oh, I think you'd better see the doctor. I've... My doctor is not very expensive. No, really, I'll be all right. I'll get some headache pills when I go out. Who's this? Oh, that is Tante Clara. <laughs> Mademoiselle, did I understand you to say that you are uh, with an American magazine? Yes. I'm a staff photographer. Oh, then you are here on uh, your vacation, no? No. Uh, it's an assignment I've wanted to do for a long time, to be called the face of France. Uh, the collective face, you see, caught in various individuals who altogether will express the nature and the spirit of the country, if I'm lucky. Oh, it must be very, very interesting. You know what? What? You could help make it interesting. How? Well, the pictures can be only as good as the models. If you know anyone whose face is interesting, expressing character, good or bad, I'd be very grateful if you could send him over. I'll pay, naturally. I think I'm going to look for somebody like that. Oh, good. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, it is a very good bed, and I think you're going to sleep very good. <laughs> if you need anything, call me. I'll be downstairs. Thank huh? you, madame. <laughs>
What do you want? I asked what you wanted. I was sent for, mademoiselle. By whom? Oh, of course, Madame Morel. Forgive me for being so rude. Oh, I'm not feeling any too well today. I must thank Madame Morel. She's a very good judge. Won't you sit down? You have quite a wonderful face, you know. Have you ever had your picture taken before? Some time ago. Oh, this is going to be just swell. Oh, where is my head? I left my camera and all my equipment in the car. Would you, would you be so kind as to help me? See vous play. I hate to miss any of this light. It's uh, all in the car, a whole lot of stuff. Oh, such eyes. This is going to be marvelous. That's nice. Look so good. Lovely. Ah, lovely. Now, you just do whatever you feel like doing. Make yourself comfortable. If you like moving around, that's fine. You don't have to hold still. What are you doing? I'm taking your picture. You're not familiar with this camera? No. No, I'm not. They've had good ones for, all oh, 25 years, I suppose. Though the film and developers have improved a great deal recently. A oh, good one. They're very good for fast work and changing light. Oh, Mr. Good. Turn, is that good? Wonderful. Now then, look a little to your right. As close to the sun as you can without it hurting your eyes. It doesn't hurt. Oh, that's wonderful. Just, just one more. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, if you have time, I'd like to get some light set up. Oh. 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 I don't know if I'll be able to do it after all. I'm awfully sorry. I feel just, just awful. Everything goes in and out of focus. Almost like a bad camera. I mean, it isn't the camera, it's, it's me. What a shame. Could you come back tomorrow night? Yes, I think I can do it again, since I have this time. Oh, oh good. I'd like to get some very careful shots. about you. How do you feel? Oh, a little better. Oh, you still look a little kicked. You still should see my doctor. I haven't the time. Well, you could come over to your place. Thank you, Mrs. Morel, but I'm really much better. Good, good. Thank you, merci. Anyway, you've done enough for me already by sending me that delightful old gentleman last night. The one with the... You know, the black hair is a sweet face. Oh, I'm sorry, but I said no one, although I intend to. Well, that's odd. I was sure you had. He just sort of appeared. 
He must have thought I was crazy. Well, who was he then? Maybe uh, someone that worked for a previous tenant, and he came to see if you needed anyone while he saw you moving in. Yes, that makes sense. Anyway, he's coming back tonight. He's a wonderful model. Merci. Oh. Merci. Oh. Thank you. mind knocking when you come in. Uh, perhaps it isn't the custom in your country, but it, it makes me terribly nervous. Forgive me, mademoiselle. I'm sorry. No, you, you forgive me. I, I just don't feel very well, and I'm just not myself today. Has mademoiselle's ailment uh, improved? A little, but I'm afraid my disposition hasn't. Well, it was awfully nice of you to come back this evening. Would you like a cup of tea? No, thank you. Well, then shall we get started? Good. Uh, would you sit here? Um, by the way, how did you happen to come here last evening? I thought Madame Moreau had sent you, but she said no. Oh, I just came. I've been here before. Oh, that's what she thought. Oh, by the way, I pay for the posing. No, no, no pay is necessary. Oh, but of course I wouldn't expect you to do it for nothing. Do the lights bother your eyes? No, I don't mind them. Good. Now then, I'm using a slower shutter than yesterday, so I'll have to ask you to hold still when I make each shot. Now, could you lean back just a little? Yeah, that's good. Good. Would you look a little to your right? Good. And just a little down. That's a good one. Good. Now, um, straighten up just a bit. Good. Good. Let's turn your whole body. That's good. Oh, that's wonderful. You're not a professional by any chance. A professional model? Mm hmm. All right. Now, now then, if you're quite comfortable, I'd like for you to think back. Remember something a little sad. Something that happened that made you unhappy, perhaps. Something you did, perhaps, that you regret. Just continue to sit that way. That's good, fine. Just keep on that way, thinking about it. So we can get what we call a mood picture. Monsieur, soften your face just, that's a little too much, Monsieur. Monsieur, just relax now, that's fine, just... Just relax, Monsieur. That's good, you, you, you can move now. I expect that's all we'll have to take today. Where have you been, Cecile? Cecile? 
What do you mean? You know what I mean, you filthy, cheap, rotten shame. I, I think you'd better go now. So you can meet him. Who is he now, Cecil? Who? The same one? All you want, Cecil? You're Tell me, Cecil! Please, please, you're hiding! Go away! I told you I could not help, Cecil! Go away! I want you, Cecil! I want you! I want you! Gendarme searched the entire house with you. True? And he found no one. He also searched the entire neighborhood. Is that not so? You have found no one who resembles him? No one? It is a very odd story. I cannot imagine who it might have been. You don't believe me? It is odd. Very odd. Don't you agree? Mademoiselle, here's some hot coffee for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, how thoughtful you are. Tell me, Mademoiselle, what was the address of that house again? 344 Avenue Bonaparte. We have covered everyone we have a record of in this district, Mademoiselle. Of course, he could be from somewhere else. Eh, hey, Mazak? Could be almost anybody. Detective Mazak knows everyone around here. He has a photographic memory. Now, if you could be a little more explicit... Oh, how stupid I am. I have dozens of photographs of him. You still have them? Of course. Oh, I could develop them in a few minutes if somebody could go back with me. I... I can't go back there alone. I would be very happy to take Mademoiselle home. No, Mazak, you're going off duty. Grinnell would... No, 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 no. It's on my way. Mademoiselle, if you please. Mm -hmm. It's messy. It's over there. I know. Do you mind if I smoke my pipe? Oh, not at all. It was nice of you to come with me. If you're off duty, though, you should have gone home. Well, that's all right. I wanted to see the pictures. Tell me, how did the man first get in touch with you? Well, he didn't get in touch with me. He... He just... was there. He didn't knock. Did it not seem uh, peculiar? Did it not disturb you? Well, yes, but you see, he had such a wonderful face. Now, perhaps the 
inspector won't think I'm just a... a hysterical woman. Oh, uh, he does not. Uh... Oh, yes, he does. was here. He was. He was right here. He tried to kill me. I'm not imagining it. He tried to kill me. You have to believe me. You have to. Mademoiselle, Do you please, think I'm crazy? Please, do not excite yourself. I, I do believe you. You believe he was here? I believe you are telling me the truth. Mademoiselle, I want you to come with me on a short trip. Where? For what? I want to show you something. Oh, I, I promise no harm will come to you. For what? Where? What's it about? I must ask you to come with me without telling you what I expect. Because I don't expect it. But we must find out. Mademoiselle, please. Please, Mademoiselle. Jean Gabot died 1926. Executed for killing his young wife. The very same house, the very same room. do tell tales. Sometimes, the restless ones even revisit the scene of the crime, causing much havoc among the living thereby. What do you suppose that Rita Wallace will tell her grandchildren one day about Monsieur Jean Gabot? Will she try to explain it at all? Well, that I would like to hear, because I can't explain it. But it happened just the same. 